Hey, how's it going? Today in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to take this Raspberry Pi Pico and turn it into a bad USB. This video is for educational purposes only and only plug a rubber ducky into a person's computer if you have their permission. So in this video, we're going to learn how to make a rubber ducky do something like this. put a rubber ducky into someone's computer who you have permission to. So what this script does that I wrote is it's going to open up notepad, it's going to type something, and then what it's going to do is open up Internet Explorer, and then it's going to redirect you to, to my website. So this is just a small example of the tons of different things that rubber ducky scripts can do. And there you have it, my website. Alright, so first we're going to go to the link in the description, this GitHub page by Debisu. Um, he's the guy who made this script. So what we're going to do first is go to the install notes and we're going to, step one, clone and get a local copy of the files. So we're going to come up here to code. We're going to download this zip. We can see it's downloading right there. Show in folder. There it is. All right, now since we have those files stored locally, we can go to step two and download CircuitPython. So whether you have a Raspberry Pi Pico or a Raspberry Pi Pico W, click whichever one applies to you. I have a Raspberry Pi Pico. I'll come here. Then you want to download and install this. Again, we can show it in folder. It should look like this. All right, so now we can go to step three, which is plugging a device into a USB port by holding the boot button. It will show up as a removable media device named RPI RP2. So what that means is we're gonna hold down this button right here when we plug it into our computer, um, and then it should show up as a, a, as a removable media device named RPI RP2. So let's do that. All right, your Raspberry Pi Pico should be plugged into your computer and be a removable media device named RPI RP2. Now we'll go to step four and we'll copy the .hf2 file from the root to the root folder of the Pico. So after we do this, it will, re it will reboot after a second and then it will connect as a circuit putty. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna open up a file explorer and I already did this, so mine's already being displayed as a circuit putty. But what we're, we're going to do is we're going to go to our downloads, and we're going to go to this file that we just downloaded, and see this is the .uf2 file, and we're going to drag and drop that into our Raspberry Pi Pico. And after it does this, it'll reboot, and then we'll be able to move on to step five. Alright, so now we can move on to step 5. So we should see that our Raspberry Pi Pico is connected and is named this. So then we're going to step 5 and we're download Add a Fruit Circuit Python Bundle by clicking here. And we'll go for the bundle 8 times X MPY. So we'll download that file. It'll come as a zip. We want to go to our file explorer, show this in the folder, right here, we're going to right click and then extract all, now this might take a few minutes. Alright now that we have that downloaded we can move on to step 6. And it's telling us we have to navigate to lib in the recently extracted folder and copy addfruit underscore hid to the lib folder of your Raspberry Pi Pico. So we're going to open up two file explorers. One of them we're going to have open our Raspberry Pi Pico. And we're going to go to the lib folder. And 
And then in this one, we're going to go to our recently extracted file of the CircuitPython bundle that we downloaded. We're going to open that up, and we're gonna also going to go to the lib folder. And we're going to look for this adafruit underscore hid folder. Sorry, I spelled it wrong. Right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to this folder right here. And we're going to drag and drop it into the lib folder of your circuit python. Just like I have there. Now we can move on to the next step. Alright, now we can move on to step 7, which is just the same thing as we just did before. So we're going to open up two file explorers make sure one of them is the lib library of your circuit python um, or raspberry pi pico and then make sure one of them is in a lib library of that file we just extracted that add a fruit circuit python bundle so what we're going to do is we're going to look for some more files to add them to our lib library in our my, um, raspberry pi pico so we need add a fruit debouncer.pyv which is right here so we'll do the same thing. We'll just drag and drop that over there like I have it here. Then we'll also get adafruitticks.mp. So we'll scroll down and look for that. Ticks right there. So we'll, we'll do the same thing. We'll drag and drop that over there just like I have it here. So now on a step 8, it wants us to copy the asyncio file into the lib folder of our Pico. So we'll do the same thing, open our file explorers back up, find this asyncio file, here and then we'll copy and drag that over there like I have it as well so it should look like this all right so now we'll move on to step 9 which is our last um, thing we have to add to the lib folder which is this add fruit underscore WSGI so we'll do the same thing open up file explorers it's right above the Syncio file and we'll go ahead and drag and drop that into this file as well so now your CircuitPython or Raspberry Pi Pico should have this name and have all of these files in your lib folder. And all of these files come from the lib folder of the CircuitPython bundle that we just downloaded and extracted. Alright, so now we can move on to step 10. So we're going to copy boot.py to the root of our Pico. So this is where that file comes into place for step one. So we're going to open up File Explorer, go to our downloads, and we're going to open up that um, Pico Ducky main folder that we extracted. And in there, there will be boot.py, code.py, and all the other things you need to get this um, Raspberry Pi Pico running as a rubber ducky. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow step 10 and we're going to copy boot.py to the root folder. So what the root folder is, is basically just the home folder, just the root directory, so the home directory. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this boot, drag and drop it, oops, get boot, drag and drop it over there. And now we're going to go to step 11, we're going to copy Ducky in Python, code, web app, and WISA G server. We're going to copy all of those into the root folder of our CircuitPython as well. So we're going to copy code, ducky in Python, web app, and WSI server. So your device should look like this now minus this payload.dd. So, we can move on to step 12 now, 
that we can skip unless you have a um, Raspberry Pico W but I don't so we'll go on to step 13 which is the final step and we can download this um, payload.dd which is the rubber ducky script that your device will run when it's plugged in so after you download this payload DD script and what you're gonna do is do the same thing as before you're just gonna go to doc downloads go to that folder that we downloaded before and go to the payload we're gonna copy that and then we're just gonna paste it in our circuit Python I I already have one loaded so um, but once you have it in there it should look like this all right now your device is ready and it is not in setup mode so whenever you plug this device into a USB um, outlet into a computer it will activate the rubber ducky script and start doing whatever you told it to do so have fun with this and make sure whatever computers you're plugging this rubber ducky script into that it, you have permission from your friends for, in doing this so yeah, just make sure you have permission before doing this to anybody's computer. And I do not condone any activities that are performed with this device. Hey, real quick, I wanted to show you guys this cool website by Hack5, which has written and downloadable um, rubber ducky payloads on them. Um, and there's some cool ones on here, like changing MAC addresses and stuff. Um, and there's a bunch of different things you can do with rubber ducky scripts. Really, your imagination is the limit. So have fun and be safe. And just remember, don't plug a rubber ducky into anyone's computer who you don't have permission to do so.